So yeah, what am I looking at here? So this is one of our tall stack um, uh, self-cleaning underwater camera systems. So this is kind of our, our everything, internal computer, long distance repeater, uh, anything that you would need to be able to power and operate the camera system while, while it sits underwater. Um, so essentially you have the camera unit that is connected through an umbilical. So we use a hybrid power ethernet cable that runs to the surface into what we call a surface enclosure that can then transmit the data and power from the nearest resource. So we can transmit that data by plugging into existing infrastructure into a modem or router or wirelessly through uh, a, a wireless radio bridge or even to satellite for some of our more remote location and ap applications. Awesome. Um, yeah, and so this, this is our clean sweep cycle. So one of the biggest issues with any kind of underwater deployments is biofouling or marine growth. So being, and especially with camera equipment, you know, it's, as soon as that growth goes over the lens, you're dead in the water. So being able to automate that process of self-cleaning and cleaning on a regular basis to prevent any type of calcification, barnacles, uh, algae, or any kind of any type of marine growth from actually taking hold and be becoming a long-term uh, problem that someone, some kind of intervention has to then go down, whether it's ROV or a scuba diver having to go down there and maintain this equipment. So. And the biggest benefit would be that you wouldn't have to monitor continuously. It would monitor just moving things. Absolutely. And and, yeah. So use AI. Exactly, exactly. So kind of the benefit of a long-term or permanently deployed piece of equipment is it essentially becomes part of the environment. And so being able to continuously monitor an environment as things would naturally um, naturally operate or, or go about it, their business, I guess you could say. But, in, in, yeah, exactly like you said, being able to take a long long data set and being able to pick out what what is what is the where's the actual information awesome. so training right. models to be able to do that now essentially you know we can't do that right now it takes data input and being able to you know motion detection anomaly detection and then classify what these different areas of point because it's different of depending on the industry yeah what you're looking for but as as those models are created and, and, re, and remodeled and re, redone the camera essentially becomes smarter and knows when that when those types of events are happening. Awesome. Well, thank you, Bobby. That was a great explanation. Much <laughs> <Thank> appreciated. <you. laughs> thank you.